Think back to uh, 2008. Uh, the market shifted that fall, and I immediately went to my closet and looked for the armor that I had had in the 1980s. I wasted no time to begin to strategize about the coming months or maybe years of what the economy was going to do. So I started looking for opportunities. My wife Jeanette and I, um, around the kitchen table, talk about important things sometimes, and this one happened to be about greed and fear. I've never been a greedy person, but I sure understand fear. And that shift was all about that. And fear can certainly be a motivator. It gets us off and gets us moving often. And um, I was imagining my 36-year-old business at that point and all the people that depended on their jobs uh, at that particular moment. So on November the 12th, on 2008, I read this announcement in a Canadian design magazine called Azure. Evolo skyscraper competition, submission deadline January 19th, 2009. With no limit on site, height, or shape, architects, engineers, and designers are invited to create new concepts for skyscraper construction. Designs must be technologically feasible and environmentally responsible. The entry was due on January the 19th, 2009. That was just two months away at that particular time. I realized later um, that the competition had actually started in June. And the reality was that uh, I was way behind, clearly way behind. And I had 69 days from a standing start to conceive, put this idea together, present it, and submit my idea. And I've always wanted to do a high-rise building, and certainly um, no architect uh, would feel any different about that point of view. So on November the 16th of 2008, I started in my sketchbook, 500 sketches later, I submitted my idea as number 0571 on January the 19th, 2009. And I knew at that particular time that there were at least 1,000 architects that had also submitted their ideas for this particular competition. Well, I didn't win the competition, but actually something better happened. And what that was was simply the fact that I began to understand the value of the resources that we have in Oklahoma in particular. And um, all of you are going to see an idea presented for the first time that could only happen in Oklahoma. And before I show you this concept, I want to tell you a little bit about um, the situation that we're in architecturally. Um, buildings are energy hogs. It's known globally to be that. Um, there's a book called Eco Skyscrapers by uh, an architect whose name is Ken Yang, and he describes the fact that buildings consume half of the energy produced in the world today. What's important about this particular idea that I'm going to share with you is that it's all about the notion of using architecture as a vehicle for change. The architecture, in fact, is shaped by the wind and uh, focused on that. And the great part is that I've come to OSU to help develop this particular process. In fact, I think Jamie Jacob is in the, the uh, room here with us. It's the OSU School of Architecture, Engineering, and Technology with the development of this. Um, I've shared this with Boone, and uh, he and, um, and Ray Harris thought it was a great idea and that it had tremendous potential. So on November the 29th, 2008, I felt like I had a breakthrough. And then furthermore, on December the 22nd, um, I felt like I'd pushed this particular idea to a very different level. And so at this time, I'd like to share a concept with you called turbonomics.
Thank you. Well, I want to share a few details about what you've seen and the video is going to play in the background, but there's some very important uh, responsibilities and responses to where we are today in the energy um, side of our business. Um, what you've seen today would be a building that would be powered by natural gas, solar, and wind as well. And there are a number of sustainable features. These are not um, new necessarily, but it's a combination of these things that makes it so powerful. The small footprint, very important piece of the puzzle. The carbon fiber, fiber vertical axis wind turbines that you saw that were rotating horizontally is there to create this uh, power from the wind. Each floor moves independently of one another because the strata of the atmosphere is such that the wind would push each floor at a different level. The aerodynamic form allows the building to be uh, slippery so that the wind moves past it. There would be rainwater collection. There would be solar film, low E and triple glazing on all of the glass systems around it. There's no roof on this building, so there's no heat island effect, if you will. The polished stainless steel is reflective, so the heat is bounced off of it. And it's a building that actually deflects the facade downdraft. If you've ever been around high-rise buildings, you know it's very windy at the base. Well, this shape allows that wind to be deflected and to not have that particular phenomenon going on. Um, the lobby on the ground level is actually covered in glass and water sheets over the glass to create a cooling effect and wonderful specular experiences on the inside spaces. Parking would be adjacent or underground, um, whichever would be the most economical. The dominant feature, of course, is the vertical axis wind turbine concept. It's integrated into the facade. It's, it's not a lollipop stuck on the top, which is really what's going on today in terms of um, the sort of insincere approaches to true energy conservation and savings. So here's what I'd like you to consider, and that is where we are. Um, this whole notion that Oklahoma City and what does it offer, as was said earlier. Well, um, the average wind speed in Oklahoma is 12.2 miles per hour, 365 days a year. Um, we're the second windiest place in the United States. The first windiest is Dodge City, Kansas. Their average wind speed is 14 miles an hour. Well, here's what's so cool about this. At 13 miles an hour, the building would generate 10% of the energy necessary to power itself. But that's not the best part. The best part is that at 28 miles an hour, and that's every day in Oklahoma, okay? <laughs> every day, at 28 miles per hour, the building is energy neutral it would generate 100% of the power necessary to make a 570,000 square foot building operate. As far as I know, this has never been done before, but it's something that we should be doing, we should be focused on, and we should be moving forward. The good part about this process is that on August the 28th of 2012, we started in 2008, we received U.S. patent number 8253266B2. So who wants to build it? <laughs> Thank you.